No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and I'm back for the third time with my man, RMC Mike. Yes, sir. Three Pete. How you feeling? I'm all right, man. Yeah? I'm feeling blessed. That's good to hear. I'm back for a third time. So. The music, honestly, you got a lot of hits, a lot of stuff that I'm actually really feeling. The I'm Back song. There's a bunch of other ones, too. Yeah. You got one song with Louis Ray and uh, and Y&J that I was loving uh, mm-hmm. when I was working out this morning. You got a lot of good stuff. I feel like you're really, like, experimenting with the flow and, and, and trying to take stuff to the next level. That's exactly that's exactly what I'm doing. And it's good to see that what I was trying to do that notice it, basically. Right. Because it was like, okay, you know, I started my whole little with the little Ricky season. Uh-huh. And I just been going on, you know, sophomore, junior, all that. Right. So I just like it's senior season. I wanted to show them that I can do more than just talk for real. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I could really make music. Like I mean, there was this whole era of Flint and, you know, Detroit rap where it was like a very similar sound and the beats were, were kind of similar and stuff. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people kinda ended up jumping on the same sound. And you know how it is in rap is like if you have one city that's popping with a sound, then all of a sudden you're going to have other cities jacking it, For and sure. you're going to have big-ass rappers kind of taking the sound and shit like that. And I feel like now that we've had a few years to like kind of process that sound, now it's kind of becoming more about like who can innovate on top of it and do different melodies and different For things sure. with that basic style or whatever. And you, you've always been at the forefront of it, mm-hmm. but it's dope to see you really like – stepping it up and actually like just make it honestly just making better music like stuff that i could see going a lot further in terms of like oh, mainstream sure. popularity and like that having for a bigger sure. audience for sure that's that's kind of been like that's kind of been like my main goal lately is just to do just step out of my comfort zone for real right you know what i'm saying just try because <clears throat> we all know in these days of music it only it only would take one song this is true like, it ain't, like, rappers back in the day, they had it so much harder than it is now. Mm. It, it take one song, bro, to where you can just, it'll change your life. Right, because you've seen that with PZ over the last year or so. Hell yeah, that two million, that went crazy. Right. Every girl I know making TikToks to it. For sure. And I'm, like, telling my girl, I'm like, you realize I interviewed this month. And I'm like a huge fan of him and shit, and you just making cute little TikToks to him. I'm like, that's pretty funny. Like you don't, because you don't really take interest in like 99 percent of the rappers that I f- with. No. And then all of a sudden, he got one song that just one became song. so much bigger than than yeah, just anything like, bro, else. Bro, it's taking bro, it's taking bro places in there. Like he in Paris right now. Really? You know what I'm saying? They got First him on the runway. In Paris? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure if they want him to, he'd get up there. Right. But. You know what I'm saying? That just shows you how one song can really change your life for real. Right. So what's the last uh, year? It's been, what, like a year, year and a half since we last did an interview. What, what's yeah. been the change in your life? Or what's what's been different? What have you been up to? Um, Basically, i just been focused on what's going to take me to the next level for real. You know, that's what I've been focusing on. Like, I never, like, <clears throat> going in the studio, you never, I never was, like, searching for a hit. You know what I'm saying? Rap is what I love to do, so we just go in there and do it, and mm-hmm. the outcome be the outcome. But lately, I ain't going to lie, I've been trying to search for that. Mm. Search for, like, a hit song. Like, I want to make a club banger or some shit like that, like, for the summer. I hear it on the the new project because you definitely have a bunch of songs that sound like they're kind of aimed at girls mm-hmm. or talking about relationships, doing a little bit more of, like, thematic shit, whereas for a yeah. long time, you know, all the, the records that we fell in love with from <laughs> Flint – it wasn't like they were really about anything in particular. Right. It was just a bunch of dudes <clears throat> saying no, all the sure. funniest, craziest shit that they for could sure. on tracks, right? So basically the music got more of a substance now. Yeah. That's what I've been focusing on, making my music have like a particular substance to it. So Right, that's dope. Is there yeah. anybody who in- influenced you in particular to start adding different melodies and kind of going in different directions, maybe making the hooks a little bit more specific? And And before you even answer that, very rarely, actual fans of this podcast know I do not come on here and just start being like, "Oh, I like your music." So, no, I, for sure. I, I, if I'm complimenting somebody on their music, it, it means I actually feel it, you know. No, for sure, for sure. <clears throat> I noticed that. <laughs> I noticed that. If you don't fuck with nobody, you'll, you'll let him you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, to the answer your question, I've been listening to um, a lot of No Cap and D Baby lately. Really. That's yeah. dope. 
Like them probably like my top two artists right now. Interesting. And just li- listening to them uh, make you want to like open up a little bit more, I say. Right. You know what I'm saying? Get more personal. You know what I'm saying? Open, bring the fans into my world a little bit. Right. More. And just like <clears throat> they music got substance. I feel like these niggas drop music that is just like time is damn near. Mm. Like. 10 years from now, I can go back and listen to this song and still feel what he was talking about 10 years ago. Yeah, and I, I went to a No Cap show at the Novo out here a few mm-hmm. months back, and I definitely saw it where the fucking audience was so Serious. captivated, and they knew the words to all these songs. Word and the, for word. Yeah, like, I mean, he's, he's somebody who really, like, zeroed in on that. I, I, I feel like he's better than a lot of the people that they talk about above him. You oh, know? 100%. Yeah. He like the top of my radar right now. I don't really see nobody really out rapping no cap right now. Yeah. That's just my personal opinion, though. That's interesting, too, though, because I feel like a lot of people wouldn't assume that you are fucking with stuff from down south. <clears throat> For sure. Or even D-Baby, that you were fucking with D-Baby Hispanic cold. rappers and shit. No, he's dope, yeah. He cold. Like, <clears throat> shout out my homeboy, Pootie. That's the first time I ever heard of uh, D-Baby. He was, I was riding in the car with him, and he had played the song. I was like, who the fuck is this? This nigga hard. Like, yeah, it's a D baby dude, a little Mexican dude or whatever. And no bullshit from that day on. He's been in my on my playlist. Right. So I I've been listening to him crazy lately. That's dope. But yeah, them the two. So when you when you made that I'm back record, did it actually feel like you were, you know, back from anything in particular? Like like did you take a little bit of time away from the music or the spotlight or anything like that? Um I ain't gonna say I took away from the music spotlight. It was just like that was my feel good record, man. I just I, it was really it was really just how I was just feeling that day. It's like it's time to put the 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 the, the foot back on the pedal. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You know my brother being gone. You know we holding it down for him, holding down Ghetto Boys, RMC. You know it was just like. That that record was like a breath of fresh. I mean, a uh, breath of fresh air mm. for me. Right, for real. Like, I can't even tell you how it just came about. It was really the beat. I'm gonna put it like that. Mm. The beat, because you know, I, I don't write, so it's like I just go in there off vibes, and it was just like the vibe I'm giving me. Like I'm back. Like that's why I was actually thinking listening to the newer project is like. Did you write some of this? Because some of it seems like a little bit more well thought out. Like maybe you had taken more time with shit. Uh, not one bar, <laughs> literally. Not right. one bar was wrote. Right. But <clears throat> I don't know. I guess it just it comes with life and just how I'm just feeling at that moment. You know, with this rap shit, <clears throat> you had ups and downs. Because okay, people get it. Okay, you rap, they might see you doing good enough. But we all got a life. Outside of rap, you know mm. what I'm saying? And that sometimes that shit can bring you up, bring you down, discourage you sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. So what, you had some ups and downs in terms hell, of your personal life? Hell yeah. What kind of stuff? Always, it just, you don't got to spell everything, but anything in particular? Um, Just really trying to stay relevant. That was That's like my, my, my biggest thing is like <clears throat> keeping my name alive and keeping the brand alive. You know what I'm saying? That was my biggest thing because, you know, like like I said, me and bro came in this shit together. And, you know, he just been like my, you know, we've been Batman and Robin since we been rapping. Mm. But it was like it's, 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 they took him away. It basically showed me, like, you can't stand on your own. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it taught me a lot to myself. Like, you could really do this shit. Nah, for real, because, like, you, you really, like, blew up at a moment where you guys were both popping at the same time. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it is like that, like, where I'm sure you were working on music for how long were you rapping before you really felt like you started to blow up? Like, five, ten years? Hell no. Uh, I wasn't really the rapper, though. <clears throat> oh, okay. So you, my brother was the rapper. Mm. My brother Benji, my brother Reese. Okay. You feel me? He was the real rapper. Like, that's where RMC came from. Right. And for people who don't know what it means, it stands for Real Money Counter. Mm. But it came from my brother. So I used to dibble and dabble with it, like, in my younger days. Not, like, serious, though. 
right. just fucking around. Then my brother ended up going to jail, and then I ended up meeting Rio, and we were just, you know what I'm saying, we got in there, and it was just, it was magical for real. Right. So it was like, might as well do this shit. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I'm living my brother's dream right now. For sure, yeah, because when I'm listening to your newer stuff on YouTube, it's constantly trying to pull me back into listening to the older shit from a couple years ago. And mm-hmm. in particular, a lot of that Rio shit had just a real magic to it, you no, know? For the sure. energy was just fucking ridiculous. A match, for sure. It yeah. definitely was. So, and, it, I mean, so, yeah, they kind of, the circumstances pushed you into a situation where you had to kind of stand on your own. Yeah. Because Rio is the kind of dude who is just such a ball of energy and the music is so good and everything that it's like, for you, it kind of, you feel like it kind of puts you into the Batman, but like the Batman and Robin, like you were the Robin in the mm-hmm. situation where for you sure. weren't necessarily going to have the the same level of shine, mm-hmm. but it put you into a situation now where you kind of had to step it up. And, no, and the numbers on YouTube and shit tell that story of no, like, I'll damn, okay, you. people are really fucking with you on your own. You don't need to necessarily have Rio on the track. Real shit. And that's what I that's that's what I'm seeing now. Like even with like the last probably like three videos that I dropped, like you said on YouTube, they really been doing good numbers. And that's been opening my eyes to that too. Like, damn. Like, okay, they really seeing that I can do this shit for real. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need bro. Mm. Like, we gonna rap forever together. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, we both are solo artists. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It just we make magic together. How's he doing? And when do you think he might come home? Uh, he doing good. He doing good. He doing, you know, um, high spirits. Keep his head high. You know what I'm saying? He He's, just ready to come home. And um, I don't have an official date, but I'm gonna say we gonna push for from from what I know we gonna push for close to the end of the year. Really? Or if not, if if not the beginning of next year. Wow. But it ain't going to be too long. He'll be home. Like, it's crazy. Time flies, man. Because yeah. he was supposed to do five years. But... Yeah, but you know in the feds, you got a 60, you do 44. Right. You know how they got that shit. Where yeah. They get like time, time and a half or some shit like that. But that shit he, he's 85%. somebody who's who's pretty comfortable behind bars. Like he's he's not in there all sad and what was me or nothing. No, he not at all. That's he's probably the life like, of the party. Yeah, that's crazy <laughs> that you said that. I believe it. Yeah. Cause just by you know having conversations with him, it, it, you can tell. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then you got to think about everybody on the yard probably looking up to this nigga. Like, damn, I mean, I'm locked up with Rio. Yeah. You know, he's one of the hottest niggas in the world right now. He probably gonna have some incredible stories oh, by the yeah. time he gets up. He gonna have some shit. Yeah, he gonna have some shit. He gonna have some stories to tell for sure. Right, definitely. Um, so how often do you speak to him though? Oh. Uh, I speak to her often enough. Mm-hmm. Um, I say probably out of a week, I probably talk to him like once or twice. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Is it the kind he of he don't see the Rio the type of nigga? He don't be trying to call too much. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. He don't he don't be trying to call too much. Right. But when he call, you know, we chop it up, reminisce, bitch. I miss you. I love you. Keep your head high. You know, same right. shit. It is always kind of weird because it's like. You don't necessarily want to tell a guy who's locked up about how great your life is and how everything's fun. No, and but hanging out with pretty, these girls and doing I'm these drugs. Sure he and... see it. I'm pretty sure he see it. He see it. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Somebody got a phone in there. They're keeping him up to date. Dang. I, I, I don't <laughs> know, but I'm pretty sure he see it. Right. Definitely. For sure. Um, how, how do you have you thought about like how you're planning on attacking shit when he does get out? Like what what you think the the game plan might be? Um. Who knows? Honestly, when bro get home, we all gonna sit down. You know, me, him, Peasy. Mm. We all gonna f- sit down and figure out what's the next move, what's the best move. You know what I'm saying? But all I can say is, shit. When he get out, shit, the ball gonna keep rolling. It's right back to where we left off at. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. We're gonna get right back in that studio and get y'all fire ass music. We just trying to take this shit to the next level now. Right. You know what I'm saying? We trying to we trying to break that 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 that, that, that the industry though now. What's your relationship with PZ like these days? Uh, that's bro. Me and P our relationship good, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like we were just we were just together not too long ago. You know what I'm saying? We just shot that video, me and him just dropped. Right, I seen that. You know what I'm saying? And um bro got a lot of a lot of shit in store for us that he got planned. Really? And we got a lot of shit in motion. I really can't speak on it too much, but just know we got some some big shit in motion. Right. On the music side, to which I think it might fuck the world up. 
Right. You know, yeah. when you think of the Ghetto Boys, though, in terms of artists, is it just you three, or are there, there are other people that you consider part of it? On paper, yeah, it's okay. us three. But Ghetto Boys is more than just like you know, it's like a family. So you got closer people who was a part of it that you know got their own separate jobs. Right. You know what I'm saying? But as far as artist wise, me, Rio, and P's, you're Ghetto Boys. Have you anybody on your radar that might be good to add to the team? Yeah, it's a lot. It's really a a lot, like especially from back home. Like mm. we got a lot. We got a lot of underrated talent that just just crazy that we just need that. That just need that exposure for real. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to give you a couple of them out there, um, my boy Slap Savage. He rough to me. I was just talking to him right before we started this interview. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the son with me and him. I had heard the son me and him did a little minute ago that out here. And I was just telling him, bitch, you was going crazy on there. Like, and then you got um, Baby Ghost. Okay. If he ain't on y'all, y'all radar yet, you might need to listen to him. Which I'm a, is, I'm a do my that's Google's. Rio, little brother. Actual brother? Yeah. Wow. This is little brother. He cold, though. Really? Rub. I'm talking about, and then he can give you two different sides. He can give you. On the harmonizing side, he can give you the real raw rap uncut side. Oh, okay. So that's what make him dope to me. Uh, we got a lot of people, bro. Um, up and coming. If y'all at Six War, man, he, he rough. Uh, Money Boy Mark. Y'all probably know about Babyface E. Yeah, I heard. Uh, I was supposed to interview him a while back, and I heard him again on your project. Uh, yeah, Babyface E. We got we got a lot of people like from Flint that's talented as hell. It's wild because you're somebody who kind of got on while you were a little bit older, yeah. but then it's like every year there's a whole shitload of new, new. talent that are young as fuck. Tell me about and it, and it really keeps you on your toes, right? Trying hell to compete yeah. with them. Hell yeah! Like I just uh, before I got down here, probably two days before I got down here, I just got in the studio with. Uh, Band Gang Javar and Band Gang Biggs. Mm-hmm. And it was like real shit. Me and Rio was probably the first niggas listening to them niggas in Detroit. Like when I mean, in Flint, when they came out. And I was just explaining to them niggas the other day, like, man, that's crazy. Like, I'm in the booth with y'all niggas. And, you know, we was like, fuck with y'all niggas heavy. But the crazy thing is, I thought these niggas was older than me, man. <laughs> these niggas is young, man. Really? Yeah, and I'm just like, damn. And that just goes off what you said. Like, you know, we caught it kind of late. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm finna be 30 years old. Really? You know what oh, I'm you're saying? not even 30 yet? I ain't 30 yet. I'll be 30 in February. Okay. It's like the voice and the fact that you a little heavy set makes me feel like you're a little bit older. Yeah. No I mean, offense. It ain't, no, it ain't that. It just, <laughs> it's the way I carry myself, too. Right. Yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? Conversation-wise and just all that. It's just Everybody always thought I was older than what I was. Right. But mm. I feel you. When I was I was watching this video of you doing a little tour of Flint, mm. and you were like at the barber shop, and, walk a mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, man, I I was kind of surprised. It's like a little bit more desolate, and there's like a there's really ain't shit going on from what I could tell. At least in that video, I don't know if there's other sections of the city that are a little bit more lit. Ain't shit going on. It's a it's a quiet place. With it's got low population too. Yeah, you know, probably like eighty. 80,000. 80,000? Probably not even that no more, for real. Because really? a lot of people moving out. And it's probably less than 80,000, for real. Right. But, yeah, it's small. It, it ain't shit going on, bro. That's why we trying to do this shit to bring back to the city. Right. You spend much time out there still or just once in a while? I live in the city Oh, you still. do live there still? Okay. Hell yeah, I still live in the city. What what makes you not want to move somewhere like L.A. or even Detroit? Um, or? Honestly, I don't know. I've been, big, I've been big on that lady, though. I've been looking up a couple places to where I've been looking for houses and shit. Like, I'm on the verge of probably moving out. Like, I wouldn't sell my houses back home and then. Like, I keep them, but I'm on the verge of moving out. Mm. I've been thinking that's been on my mind lately. And, uh, a couple places I've been looking at is Atlanta, mm. Texas. Them like my top two I've been looking at lately. 
You got homies there that you plan on tapping in with, or you just like those oh, cities? Oh yeah, yeah, I got yeah, I got I got people in Atlanta and Texas, and then like uh, in Texas, like I got um, a good relationship with TSF and oh, okay. like Peso Peso and Sauce so Walker now. Like that, uh, like a peso peso, my man's for real. Like I fuck with him. That nigga called me just to check up on me and all that type of shit. Just, yeah, those guys you know, are great. I fuck with them heavy down there. You feel me? They got so, a lot of energy. No, man, they got good energy. Yeah, the good kind, and that's that. Them the people that you need that I like to surround myself with. And you guys have similar taste in uh, beverages as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We definitely do. What's the, what's the drink, status of the drink? Yeah, well, we're drinking water, <laughs> water as well. Yeah. <laughs> no, I still sip drink though. I don't. I don't go crazy like I used to. Uh huh. I'm, I'm slowly quitting. But you know how that go. You think that Rio being gone has allowed you to fall back on it a little bit? He was a real Hell advocate, yeah. right? Hell yeah. <laughs> like for real, for real. Right. But I think it's a good thing for both of us, man. Because it's like now. That we get a little older or whatever, you know, health is wealth. So I've been looking, you know, I mean, I've been, I've been a big, I've been a, a bigger guy all my life for real. Uh-huh. But I didn't got big, big. I'm finna try to tone this shit up a little bit. This is the biggest you've been, or you, you were heavier before? No, I was heavier than this in like high school. I was heavier than I was real fat. Like mm. I was big as shit. Right, playing football and shit on the O line. It feels like there's always like a time in a rapper's career where they sort of realize that the lean might be having a bad impact on them, and that if they really want to do the best that they can in terms of their career, that mm-hmm. it might be best to to leave it in the past. No, at a certain for sure, point. for sure. And it's uh, it's not just with the lean; it's a lot of shit. Like I'm trying to cut back on the cigarettes and I cut them too. out and. I'm really probably finna leave these blunts alone, man. I'm probably finna go back to papers for a minute. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Just or you know that you know the paper just a cleaner hit. Don't you feel free to light up as far oh, yeah. as right now though. I for, I forgot. Yeah, we good. I but, to give you the warning. Yeah, just I don't know. I want. I just want to tone up. I don't really just like want to do no drastic. Like, oh, he got little as hell. No. Yeah. Cause they love a big nigga. A skinny big RMC is, Mike isn't isn't in the works. Uh-uh. Big niggas in style right now. Yeah, there's a lot of truth to that. Let me be honest with you. The females love us for some reason. Right but a, a lot of rappers get that into their head. Like, like I always thought that Paul Wall did that, but I think he actually <laughs> had health issues. No, like, for sure. He got on as a chubby dude, and then he lost hella weight right away. And I'm not going to lie. Like, there is something about being chubby that makes people kind of fuck with you. Like, if, if you're a fat guy who's drinking and partying, it's like it's more of a fun vibe. And then if you're sober, I feel like people don't necessarily regard you the same way. Yeah, and then I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I'm not. I'm not one of them insecure fat dudes. Mm. Like I don't go swimming with a beater or a shirt on. <laughs> I'm popping top. Fuck are you talking about? You're gonna see these stomach, these titties, all that. Right. You're gonna see it all. It's I'm all about insecure. confidence when you're fat. Hell yeah, it's yeah. all about. But believe it or not, a lot of big people don't have that confidence. Mm-hmm. And if I can express that to the world, man, listen, man, motherfucker got to take me for who I am. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can get the good, the bad, with the ugly. You got to be able to do that. You, you gotta, got like, to. When I think of Biggie or Big Pun or, like, all these rappers that I loved when I was younger, that was that was part of it. It's like, oh, you can be you can be fat. No, You just sure. got to wear it the right way. For sure. Yeah. For sure. You got to love it. You got to love it. You, first of all, you got to love yourself first, man. Mm-hmm. That is the... That's what people be. That's what. That's what I feel like. A lot of people lose that. Like, bro, you gotta love yourself. You gotta take care of yourself before you can take care of anything else. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you're the one that's making this shit happen. If you ain't here, you know what I'm saying. And it's funny that you say that about being all skinny and shit, though, because I lost like 40 pounds over the course of the last like year or so, mm-hmm. and. Yeah, I feel like a bitch sometimes. It's like I'll be looking in the mirror, or looking at myself in a photo, and I'm like, "Damn, I used to feel like a big dude, and now I kind of am starting to feel like a skinny little fuck." And I don't know. Nah, I look good on you, brother. You think? <coughs> look good on you. It's a slow process though, because then also when you lose mad weight, everybody thinks that you're addicted to drugs. Mm-hmm. When I go on Vlad, especially because they got the super high quality cameras, For sure. I will have to read a million fucking comments just talking about he's he's back on the coke, he's back on the coke, mm-hmm. like, and I'm like, bro, I'm healthier right now than I've been in years right. and years. But right. they just they see you losing that weight, and it and it does take a while for it to look normal on you. No, you, for sure. If you lose ten pounds in a couple weeks or a month. It makes your face sink in in a way that does look a little unnatural until until your body gets used to it. 
Yeah, but I see a lot of big guys are getting they stuff back together. I'll say just a couple of examples. You know, Ross, he slimmed down. Mm. And then I just I was just seeing I was on Instagram yesterday and I seen him make a post, uh, Fat Boy SSE. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He made a post from how he was how he looked it back then and how he is now. Right. And you could just you could tell he just in a better place. Like he just that that's that's another one. And then who else? Uh who else losing weight out this motherfucker? Look at Peasy. Peasy lost some weight, yeah. Peasy lost some weight. Big Lou. Mm. Lou Graham. He lost some weight. You know what I'm saying? We all we all was bigger guys, but like I said, it's like the older we get, it's just like you gotta take care of your health more. You know what's wild though? You should go out to Europe because I was out there for a month and eating everything, eating at five star restaurants and like, you know, in, in France and Italy and shit. You go get breakfast. They're bringing you out big ass plates of bread and butter. At, at really, not just breakfast. Every meal, it's like hella, hella butter and food and and, and jam and everything. <laughs> and I'm really like, normally I don't eat bread in the morning. Normally I just right. eat eggs and bacon. Mm-hmm. But I'm out there eating shitloads of bread before every meal. And I get home and I get on the scale and I didn't gain a single fucking pound in the whole month that I was out there. And everybody was telling me that that was going to happen. That you go out there and you can eat whatever the fuck you want and you won't gain weight. And somehow it seems like it's actually true, and I don't understand so why. So you telling me it's just the American food that's I don't fucking know. us up? People try to say that like all the ingredients are different in America. There's all kinds of rules about what you're allowed to put in food and stuff. Right. Which, yeah, maybe, but I don't know, man. I was really picking out out there. I don't know it, the way, the reason. I mean, the way you said that, it might be some truth to that because at the end of the day, we don't know how this shit be in process for real, bro. Mm. We don't know the behind closed doors out this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, hey. That's why I'm glad to have a girl who likes eating healthy because yeah. I get home last night and she's literally cooking like $60 worth of steak from the fucking nicest grocery store in L.A. Mm-hmm. And I'm just looking at her like, you spent $60 on these two <laughs> steaks for dinner? Like, you really turned it into a bougie bitch. We were eating fucking McDonald's when I first met you. <laughs> shit changed. No, shit changed for sure. Yeah, definitely. You, you yeah. in a relationship these days or? Nah. That's not it's not going on. No, nah, it ain't going on right now. Why? What happened? I feel like you, you were in one relatively recently. <laughs> like last time I interviewed you, right? Maybe? I can't remember. No, I, I don't think I said I was in a relationship. Oh, okay. I ain't been in a relationship. I've been single. I've been single probably for like four or five years now. Oh, okay. You feel me? So. What, no women could handle the, the rapper lifestyle or what? No, I ain't going to say that. It's... I don't know. I probably say it's more so me, man. I uh, they say you don't supposed to hold on to the shit, but you do. I had have my heart broke before. Mm, you same. know what I'm saying? Shit like that. I got trust issues. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. So I'm, I'm basically working on me, man. I'm, right. I'm working. I, I'm working on me to be the best person I could be. So when I do find that lady, I can get raw all of me. You know what I'm saying? You don't shit get lonely. Like yeah, you when know, I'm single, it, I get no, lonely get as a lonely. motherfucker. It I need somebody. <laughs> it definitely get lonely for sure. Yeah. And then it just, I don't know, you get tired of fucking with all these different little females and shit, man, because that shit gets stressful. Right. That shit gets stressful. You exchanging all these different energies and shit and uh, mm. that shit. It ain't. So I, w- I would want to sit down. If you ask me, I want a wife. Right. You feel me? I don't got no kids yet. I want to have a kid. Right. You know, oh, it's the best. Shit, shit like that. It's the best. It'll change. And then it, it. was like, I was kind of blessed growing up because I had my mother and my father. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So they was married. They've been married 26, right? 26, 27 years. They set a good example for you in they, terms of what that should be like? No, for sure. Like, even if they did have problems, they didn't let us see it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. So it was like, it was just, they, they, they gave me the guideline of what love and shit and marriage is supposed to be like or what I think it's supposed to be like. Right. It's just, I mean, only time to tell with me. Okay, but th- this is the thing is like a lot of times now you hear people having conversations about body count and, you know, could you wipe somebody up who has slept with people that you know, et cetera. You got any strong feelings about that? Uh, don't know that that shit really matter to me, man, because at the end of the day we all got to pass. Right. We all done did shit we weren't supposed to. We all have been out here doing it. Just <clears throat> I feel like it's who you can tolerate. It's what you can tolerate the most, man. Mm. With who, what, with 
that certain person. Especially being from a small town. Yeah. Everybody got to Every, fuck each other, right? For sure. <laughs> That's exactly what's going on. A whole bunch of fuck you, man. Right. It's not like Miami or L.A. where, I mean, that's still the case, but it's more plausible that you would be able to, well, especially, okay, if you're L.A. or Miami, that's somewhere where people move. So a, gir- sure. a girl from Kansas will move to Miami to be a baddie. For sure. And, yeah, she fucked 20 dudes, but they're all dudes she went to high school with. You don't know them, so right. it's not really awkward yeah, in the that same way. That shit really don't matter to me, man. Yeah. It don't matter to me. If you can love me and I feel love correctly, oh, well, bro, it is what it is. Yeah, that's how I feel, too. Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck, bro? <laughs> like, for real. <laughs> Motherfuckers be taking that relationship shit too, too. I ain't gonna say too serious because it is a serious. It's it's a serious note, but it's like I don't know. I just <clears throat> the morals ain't the same no more. You feel that way? Hell yeah. In what way? It's just like the way women. I mean, like how can I explain this? It's like. Being a, um, it's not express. I be I've been seeing a lot of people doing the screaming out the fifty fifty shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Which ain't nothing wrong with it. I wasn't I wasn't mind going fifty fifty, but it's like what well, my pop showed me. He was always the the nigga who did everything. Mm. Not saying that my mom, my mama still worked. She did all that, but she did that shit. And kept that's her. Like he didn't. He made sure all the bills taken care of, all that. Just you know what I'm saying, shit like that. But I don't feel like the, in these days, they it just ain't too many niggas like that no more. Right. It ain't too many niggas like that no more. Just to take care of it, take care of a woman like that, like everything. Like I didn't try that shit, and it backfired in my face. Right. I tried to be a good nigga. You tried to take care of a girl. She she I, what? She cheated or what? She yeah, did? cheated yeah. and then and some other shit. But mm-hmm. it was like I try. I'm talking about like cut every one of my sad little hoes off. Like I tried the good nigga role, mm. and that shit blew up in my That'll face. That'll really fuck a good dude up. No, for sure, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Like I tried that shit. Like for real, for real. I tried that shit. I tried the good nigga role, and that shit backfired. Yeah. So it just be like, I ain't giving up on love, though. I ain't going to never say that. I ain't giving up on love. I'm but, just. Okay, if you're a rapper or you're someone who's doing well in your life, and let's say that your expenses in a year are, you know, 100 grand, 200 grand, whatever. I mean, it's hard enough to find a girl that you fuck with in the first place, but to find a girl who's also able to go 50-50 with you when you're trying to live in a nice-ass spot and yeah. you're trying to drive nice cars and shit, yeah. it's got to be kind of difficult, especially if you are if you end up falling in love with a girl who's a motherfucking dental assistant. Mm. It's just, it's it, you're going to have to help her out if you no. want her to be able to be side-by-side with you. For sure, but in the same sense, we need more, we, we need more women that... We need more women that will back us up, too, though. Mm. It's like a lot of these women, they just want to be taken care of and all that. and You know what I'm saying? But, shit, I ain't going to say we need taken care of, but, shit, we need help, too. Right. I don't think women really understand a lot of the, a lot of shit we go through. Like, as men. Mm-hmm. Like, we go through a lot of shit. Hell, yeah. You know that? Just out in the streets or just moving around. It's just We go through a lot of shit, and it's a lot of shit we got to worry about. And when you go through some terrible shit and your girl really holds you down that, and doesn't waver and she, she is the person that you need her to be emotionally and mm-hmm. shit, that is what really will get you just bonded to them and in a totally different way. That and just a motherfucker who, I like, a motherfucker who will help build up a motherfucker, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Like a one night, it can go both ways. Either a man building up a woman or a woman building up a man, but I feel like... <clears throat> A woman should help if she should help you build. She should help you want to be better, basically. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like come with, come up with a plan. Let's, like you said, okay. I might be doing a dent. I might be dating a dental hygienist, whatever mm-hmm. she called. But well, we come up with some shit. Like okay, she come up with a plan. It could be anything, but I'm just gonna put it in like say, boom, she fuck around and start our own marijuana company. Mm-hmm. Shit like that, like. Just give you like good ideas and shit, motherfucker. I, I need a mother, I want a motherfucker that just gonna want to help build together. 
Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Coming up with ideas. Don't always wait on me to, you know what I'm saying, come up with the shit. Right, because you know what I'm always impressed by is relationships where, like, the power balance can change and they stay together. And the most obvious example to me of that is Cardi B and Offset. Mm-hmm. Because when she got with him, he was the big rap star, and she was, you know, social media, doing her thing on TV. She's obviously she's doing her thing. It's not like she's a nobody, but she was a smaller artist. No, for sure. And now she's out of here. She's out fucking here. gigantic. And obviously he's still what he is. He's still a, yeah. a, a legend, a, a, a huge player in the game and everything. But she, I don't know. It's kind of interesting when the power changes that much, you no, know? for sure. And I, I, I'm glad they still rocking. You yeah, it's me? inspirational, right? No, it's definitely inspirational, you feel me? Mm. But I even say, I even say like, we can even look at an older couple like J, like J and B. True. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that shit amazing. Mm. Like y'all still been together. Y'all been locked in for so long. Yeah. And y'all still going there. Like that shit dope. That shit, that shit dope to see. He knew what he wanted because I think he scooped her up when she was like 20 Hell or some yeah, shit. Yeah, he knew what the fuck he wanted. <laughs> he like, shit, fuck that. And if you think about it. Yes, she was a relatively popular artist at that time, but she was not anywhere near where she's at now. Hell, though. 20 years later, like, she's a fucking massive legend. When when she came in the game, it was not, you know, when he scooped her up, he saw the vision and no, he helped to sure. get her to where she's at now sure. and never really asked for credit for it or anything, you know? Like, people kind of underrate that. I, I hate people like that. Yeah. I hate people that'll help you just to throw it in your face. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's that that probably irked me the worst, man. Like, especially if I didn't ask for help, mm. that'd be the thing, too. Like, I could see if I asked you, but just, that still don't give you the justification to throw it in my face. But especially if I didn't ask you and you help a nigga out just to throw it in their face, mm. never been that type of guy, yeah. No, definitely never been that type of guy, yeah, like at all. Especially once you've seen a million different careers unfold in front of you, where to me at this point it's almost kind of regular where I interviewed so many smaller artists that end up becoming huge. Right. And, you know, a lot of times, a lot of times you maintain a good relationship, but a lot of times they just get so fucking big that they forget about you and they move on. And as an interviewer or a person who's like kind of just helping people out when they're at a smaller stage in their career, that doesn't bother me, you know, like that's very much their right. They were using me. To get where they were going, and that's fine. You know, we, we I benefited from it as well. Mm-hmm. But I can never. I, I I hate when I do see people who kind of just have to make a big show out of it and have to be like, look at like you, you got to this place because of me or some shit. Right. Like, most yeah. of the time, those people were going where they were going regardless. Well, that's why I appreciate you so much, man. This is my fucking third time. <laughs> no, it's like, it's an honor. Honestly, that mean that mean a lot to me though, bro. Because I don't see too many people with three episodes on no jump. But I don't even think you were supposed to be on the first one. I think Rio walked yeah. in and was just yeah. like, "Hey, can I have my boy Mike with me?" We're but I was already fully tapped yeah. in, so I was like, "Oh yeah, that's fire. Let's do it." Yeah, yeah. but that's some real shit right there because he could have been the only one in the title, no, for sure, and just made it all about him. He was happy to put you but, on with him. But guess what? That's just how we rock. Because let it would have been the other way around, mm. and you would have interviewed me, and I had, it would have been the same situation. Right. Like, no, nah, bro, my brother here. We might as well make. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. But I just said, I appreciate you for bringing me back again. Shit, that, that shit dope to me, man. Well, it's my pleasure. It's always a blessing to Especially be Especially, like, because I got the email, like, do you want to interview Mike again? So I threw on the new project, and I was actually just like, oh, damn, all right, this is not a dude who's content to just keep making the same fucking song over and over. Like, I immediately was just like, damn, the, the growth is impressive to me. <laughs> down back, down back shit, it, it, it kind of surprised me, man. Uh, don't get me wrong, I like the record. But it wasn't no record that I'm just like, ah, this the one. Right. But the crazy thing is, everybody, like the little small circle that I showed the record before I put it out was like, bitch, that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? I'm like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. You feel me? And then I had went down to Oakland and uh, linked up with guys, you know. Mm-hmm. I let him hear it. He like, that's the one. Right. <laughs> I want to shoot the video. That's dope. He saw the vision too? Yes. You feel like, like you got to step up the videos a little bit at this point? Is yeah, it? It's not enough sure. to just keep doing the same gas station video? For sure. Mm. For sure. I definitely been on that trying to do like treatments, like have real treatments for videos and, 
You know what I'm saying? Different, uh, not just no one outfit mm-hmm. type of shit. You know, wardrobe change, shit like that. Right. I'm getting into it. Definitely. I'm getting into it. Yeah. How much of your income goes to drip in an average month? You, you do the designer all the time or are you just for special occasions? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put it like this. I used to go crazy. <laughs> Put it like that. It's hard to sustain that. I used to go crazy, but I don't shop as much as I used to, but I do it. I have my spurts. Mm-hmm. You know, like one month I might go crazy. Then, you know, for another, another month, next month I might chill out. I might not buy shit or I might buy fewer things, you know what I'm saying? But definitely spend a lot on this shit. We got to, though. Mm. That, that's the price. Uh, but when you got that much jewelry, you can kind of just have a regular ass t shirt on. And, no, I, and it, I and have it fills regular it out, right? days, like yeah. for sure. Like white t shirt, hoop shorts, flip flops, right? Especially when you're just no around, jury, around yeah. the crib, just local, yeah, like, yeah. But I go out in public like this sometimes, right? Especially if I'm not, well, it's most likely like back home. Mm. Like if I'm back home and I, I ain't really on shit, I ain't really got to wear shit. Yeah, what's the point? What's the point? You got to have the chains on whenever you leave the house? No. No? I don't wear them all the time. Like, when I'm going out to place and I know I'm going to be out here, I, you, you, I got to put them on. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But just chilling around. No, and these bitches heavy, man. <laughs> I believe it, yeah. Real shit, these bitches heavy. Sometimes this. I do touch rappers' chains, and I'm like, God damn it. That's, that's, that feels like a painful experience to have that shit on all day. Yeah, look at that. What's that fucking eight pounds of pure Cuban link? Whatever. Now you tell me that's lighter, that's heavy. Like drop it on the table so they can hear this shit. I could not imagine carrying that around. I think I'm gonna do it like this. That's like that's eight hundred that's eight hundred grams. No, that's intense right there. Sorry to all the headphones users out there, but no, that's that's I mean, I couldn't Personally, There's like not no like Cuban right here. Yeah, I I got a phobia of even like having a watch on. I don't like the the cramped feeling of having it on my wrist. I finally I'm, I got the engage, the wedding ring now though. Mm-hmm. I just my, bought my first ring. My first jewelry I ever rocked. Yeah, so I yours never, is a little I, bit bigger than mine. I never liked the rings though, but I like this motherfucker. It got little bouquets and shit on the top of it and shit. How I much like you spend it. on that? This, this ring was probably uh, what I pay forty five hundred. Forty five hundred. Okay. It wasn't that much, but it was 45. Yeah, this one is only like two grand, so I feel all right if I lose it. Yeah, but shit, yours solid. Yeah. So it is yours better. Shit get all scratched up, though. I took it in to get polished one time, and then when they gave it back, it felt like it looked thinner. It is. Yeah. You know, I was just going to tell you that you don't want to keep getting it polished because you losing out on that. You losing on your weight. And so I should take it off when I'm, like, lifting weights or doing anything that's going to, like, scratch yeah. it up. But Hell then yeah. I'm scared if I take it off that I'm going to fucking lose it. Yeah, that's always. So instead I just let it get fucked up. Yeah, that's always a, a possibility. <laughs> yeah. Like, I lost my motherfucking grill, man. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. I lost my shit in Atlanta. I think we all, the only person I ain't lose they shit is Jay, man. Really? I think Louie lost his shit, too. Just... What do it you was do? A, you take it out I, to eat and then you lose it. No, what it was, I, I down there, I down there, kind of remember what it was. I think I had a case for it, but I fuck around, lost my case. So every time we'd pop them out, we'd get like some paper towel or some tissue and wrap it up. Right. I really think I just threw that shit in the trash one day mm-hmm. and left the room, and it was over. I definitely. I was in a whole another city to when I realized I didn't have it. I was getting ready for another show, putting on all my jewelry. I'm like, where the fuck my grill at? Yeah. I couldn't find my grill. I'm like, damn. I'm like, this bitch really go. <laughs> there, like, there was this rapper back in the day. Uh, well, he's still doing his thing. This dude, Duop Kane. And he left his fucking grill at the spot. And then I wrapped it in paper towels and I kept it. And then my girl threw it away and I had to explain it to him. But damn. I'm pretty sure it was like a $300 grill or something. So it wasn't the end of the world. But oh, yeah, mine, one of mine was way a little bit way more than that. Yeah. That's why you got to do the permanence. You would never? No, nah, hell no. No? <laughs> hell no. I wouldn't do permanent. When I see Kodak getting that surgery and shit, just happy as fuck to be having all this shit screwed into his mouth, I'm like, bro, that is a dedication to stunting that I just cannot even fucking relate to. Like, yeah, that shit crazy. And them niggas go put them diamonds, them solitaires in their too, in their teeth. Yeah. That shit hard, though. That's a commitment to the game. Hell yeah. Definitely. His, his rapper shit is serious, man. 
how how'd you end up working with uh, Sada Baby on the new project? Have you have you been tapped in with him for a while? Or? Yeah, Sada Baby like my brother for real, bro. Okay, now, he was one of the first niggas from the D to tell me like, bro, you can send E, bitch. We gonna do music for life. Really, and anything you anything you hear me on, I don't give a fuck what it is. He bitch send it to me. I'm gonna get it on it. Right, you feel me? It just <clears throat> we always had that genuine love. That's what I, that's what I move off a lot though. So like anybody that you see me with or linked up with is always been on the genuine side. Like right, just on the real side. Like motherfuckers don't be on no I'm bigger than you or fake famous type shit. Right, niggas be real stand up guys. Like because you know me and Sada had our issues at one point. We we back cool now. We haven't actually tapped in since we uh, settled our differences. I'm pretty sure you tap in if you reached out to it. That's a good idea, actually. An interview with me and him that would be, would great. be a dope idea. Because the last one we did, we took mushrooms and we got real weird. We were acting silly as fuck. I feel like that'll be a good idea. Just <laughs> yeah. reach out to him. I I. I I damn near ninety eight percent sure he he not gonna say no. Yeah, I'm all at him. But there there was a a time period where when the whole Flint shit was popping off, you know I'm I'm a fan and I'm paying attention trying to figure out who gets along with who. Mm. And I wasn't necessarily seeing him collaborate with some of the newer artists that were coming out of Detroit and Flint. And I was kind of wondering like, is there any kind of static there or anything? No, I ain't no static. It just <clears throat> uh, you know static. Basically came out, you know, Sada was going through some shit itself. True. With, you know what I'm saying, him and his label and his situation, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes, bro, you got to take a step back real quick and get all your business handled mm. first, you know what I'm saying? And then, that's what he did. He took a step back, you know what I'm saying? Because Sada was one of the biggest niggas out the D at one point. Hell yeah. You feel me? He's still the man, you know what I'm saying? He still make good music, great records, all that. It's just... It was that he had to step back and get his business side together, like you know what I'm saying? Right. Because when he came out and said he never made no money off distro, cause that shit blew me. Blew like, your mind? Huh? How? Really? He was just signed to, and so Man, I don't was... know the the extent of like what is, but I remember he uh, he said this what came out of his mouth like he yeah I got it was a it was a video or some shit and he was like uh like yeah I um. He ain't made no money off distro. He just now started making money off distro kid or some shit. And I'm just like, damn, boy, you got down there platinum records. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Sign into a label though. They start doing all kinds of shit with that bread, yeah, huh? You got, you just gotta be careful, man. Mm. But you, look, like I said, bro, us come, we street niggas, man. We, we, uh, we don't know nothing about this shit, man. So mm. it's like sometimes you gotta go through shit in order to understand. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. But then, too, it's like us. I, I love it where I'm at, man. I'm I'm content with what we doing. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. But it's like, motherfuckers, <clears throat> how can I put it? It's like, motherfuckers, <clears throat> let me see. I don't want to say the wrong shit, man. Right. And I'm high as shit, too, though. Right. But Run it back. What the fuck we was talking about again, man? I can't remember. That was a few minutes ago. That shit crazy. <laughs> I ain't never just had a brain fart like that, man. That's funny. And don't edit that out, please. <laughs> I want them to see this shit. They're going to be like, man, this nigga Mike crazy. Nah, yeah, the fans will love you for that. I really just had a brain fart, though. I mean, I like, I was trying to get to a point, but it, my mind just went, like, blank. What were we talking about? Sada. We were Sada. on the Sada conversation. Uh. Who's cool with who? Talking about people potentially not liking each other. And then, what? Record deals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The record deals. And him oh, not yeah. making money off Distro Kid. Oh, yeah, okay. The fans are like, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? Because yes. they were just seeing us talking about Don't it. do drugs, kids. Because <laughs> I definitely had a brain for her. Okay, I do remember. What right, talking about. okay. Okay, the, the. The record deals and all that shit. With the record deals, you just got to be careful, bro. Mm. Oh, okay. I get what I was saying. Like I said, sometimes you just got to go through certain shit. You mm. know what I'm saying? You got to <clears throat> bump your head sometimes. You know what I'm saying? But with with, with, with me and Rio, it's like them niggas that gave us so much game to where we kind of can avoid certain shit. 
You know what I'm saying? Right, because I always think about Rio saying how PZ sat him down, put him in the car, drove him around, told him everything he needed to know about the game, yeah. showed him his, his distro kid money or yeah. whatever it was at the time, and like really kind of put yeah. him on game. Because for so many generations of rappers, the whole dream was like, oh, you're going to get signed to a label. They're going to make you a millionaire. They're going to yeah. do everything for you. The reality of the game these days is like you got to be a fucking warrior that goes out yeah. there and gets your bread and, on a and, daily basis, right? And look, that's what I love so much about PZ because it's like, you know, we, 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 me and bro, we was fucked up. We was broke. Mm. We had shit. A nigga easily could have been like, yeah, we're going to get these niggas 100000 a piece. And you know what I'm saying? Woo woo. It could have came up with a crazy ass deal and been and fucked us and all that type of shit. But we wouldn't have knew about it. We just, you know, this nigga offering us a hundred. Mm. Shit, you know what I'm saying? But he actually showed us how to milk the game. Mm. Like, all y'all niggas gotta do is rap. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Like, he ain't give us no, he ain't, when we signed the ghetto boys, he ain't give us no money, no, no shit like that. Nigga, he gave us more than money, man. He gave us the game. Mm. You feel me? And that's going to live on forever. That's some real shit. But you ever you ever think about signing artists or, or having an artist under you like that? Yeah. I think about it all the time. Sometimes I be keeping it real with myself. I don't feel like I'm big enough to sign an artist yet, man. Mm. I don't think, because I don't want to cripple nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, because there's still a lot of shit that I'm learning. It's still a lot of shit I don't know about this game. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm going, I'm, 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 I'm learning as I go. That's some real shit, though. Cause there was an artist a few months back that I saw before they popped off, and I knew 100%. I'm like, this guy's going to be fucking huge. And I thought about trying to have that conversation about signing and managing them, and I just was like, I don't know what I'm bringing to the scenario necessarily. Like, I, I just felt like this guy is going to blow up either way, and if I try to, like, insert myself into his deal or whatever, it's just going to – I just didn't feel like he needed it. And, you know, realistically, if I wanted to work with this artist, it would have been – I don't know. It would have felt kind of selfish. I would have felt like he's he's going to be fine on his own, which might sound kind of foreign, I, I get from the way you're looking at me. That you're thinking, like, <laughs> Adam, you could have done a lot for him. Yeah, true, but – I don't know. I just I, and also just knowing myself, I'm so focused on my business and my life right. that I just couldn't really imagine myself doing the things that you would have to do in order to really fully embrace an artist, like being on tour with them. You know, right? And a nigga can't do nothing but respect that. Yeah. Because like I said, you could have you could have got in this shit and fucked it up, and <laughs> you know what I'm saying, one for yourself. Right. But you're not that type of nigga. So yeah, there's some niggas that's that type of nigga though. Yeah. <laughs> You feel me? You just ain't one of them. Hey, you wanna know something funny is I actually uh well, I was a little taken back. I was in the gym this morning watching that that video I said where you're giving the tour of Flint mm -hmm. and I saw the house that you lost your virginity in. Yeah. And that shit was a straight twenty seven four bando or Chevrolet. Yo, I was like, that's a that's a crazy spot. It probably looked a little bit better back then, but Oh yeah, it was way better back then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Pops never made sure that bitch looked good, you know what I'm saying? Right. Do you ever feel like you're too famous to be just around the city like that? Or I don't feel like I never feel like that. You're comfortable enough that you don't see it as being a danger? I ain't going to say comfortable because I'm always on my P's and Q's no matter where you at. You got to think about it. Most rappers get killed at home. Right. It be the, You know what I'm saying? It's going to be somebody in from your own city down there to, it didn't, that didn't took a lot of rappers' life mm. from their own city. So it's like... I just, I don't know, bro. I keep my head high. Right. I pray to God. Watch over me. It is what it is. Is Flint that kind of city, though, where the, they're really taking people's lives for what they got? Hell yeah. It's but that's, like that. in, that's any city, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, this motherfuckers are hungry, bro. The pandemic fucked the world up. Motherfuckers yeah. are hungry. That is something that I hear everybody say. It's the truth. Yeah. Because during the pandemic, everybody had money, bro. Mm. Motherfuckers who ain't never had no money popped up with some money. New car, new, you know what I'm saying? Everybody had money. Mm. But they thought that shit was going to last for forever. Right. No. It ain't going to last for forever. Now niggas back broke. Niggas back hungry. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Niggas like shit. And then society going up. Rent going up. Food going up, all that. So it's really even worse now. Mm -hmm. 
Motherfuckers up. Mm-hmm. I knew a dude who had a bike shop, and during the pandemic, everybody started buying a lot more bikes because they got free time. They they want to go have fun, whatever. So he starts, you know, he he feels like, oh, everything's good. This is never going to run out. Every, the the demand for these bikes is going to be like this. So he starts investing into the business like crazy. But then after a year or two or whatever, the fucking pandemic's over, and people aren't buying shit the same way, and the whole business kind of fizzled out because he basically like invested too much at a certain point and even bro when i think about it in retrospect like during the pandemic our numbers had never been higher than that right. we had so many goddamn people watching everything we were doing live and shit like that the numbers is crazy and i'm just thinking oh we're lit we're popping like you know i'm not really thinking like this is because of the pandemic Quarantine. And you look at it now and you're kind of like oh okay so you know like granted like i'm glad that we didn't like over invest during that time period, mm-hmm. but you know, a lot of people basically made that mistake. Hell yeah, a lot of people make that mistake. Mm, definitely. So, all right, what else is on the table right now for you in terms of uh, things that you're working on? Just you, you uh, planning on any tours, anything like that? Um, we just did our little. We working on this little tour, this little Flint Wave tour. We mm-hmm. actually just did our first show it was last weekend. Last weekend in Columbus, Ohio. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We got a couple more cities that's tapped in. And then I'm also going on a tour with uh, Raw Running With Motion with CMO. Mm-hmm. I got a show out here. Oh, all right. For the first time. First time. Well... When me and Rio came out here, we did do that little show, but it was on it wasn't it was on some unexpected shit. It was just oh y'all here right. pop up. See that and is how the up. pandemic changed shit though, yeah. is because it used to be like rappers were just getting booked left and right for mm-hmm. whatever. Like you wouldn't be able to come here without somebody being like, hey, come play this party, this club, no, whatever. Sure. That shit all kind of slowed down to a certain extent. But huh? since then, and that's that was what probably I think we came out here what twenty nineteen or that was twenty twenty. 2019 mm-hmm. and we did that but this would be my first show in la july 12th fire let me know i'll pop up i definitely will let you know i'm gonna send you the flyer let's do it but uh yeah me louis ray and simo oh, okay that's a lot that's you know what i'm saying coming to la I'm finna come rock out i need all my la people tap in amazing let's get it so any, anything you want the yeah. them to know about anything in particular they gotta check out uh, I need y'all to go check out them last couple videos I dropped. Still go stream that senior season. I'm working on new projects. It's a lot of more music. I'm still dropping. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking forward to 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 do it. I, I want to do some bigger features. Mm. Oh, I, I, that's what that's that's what I'm on right now. I want to I want to get in that bag to where I want to get. I want to work with people. Well, if I pay you for a feature and it's whack, I want my money back. For sure. That's an RMC Mike quote. For sure. I don't mind paying you for a feature. <laughs> but when I heard I feel that, like it's worth it. I was like, who did he pay for a feature? You ever actually done that, or is this more hypothetical? Uh, I, 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 yeah, I don't think I paid for that. <laughs> okay, it's just I don't think if I that does it. happen. Yeah, if it does happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if that does happen, I want my money back. You would, too. Right. All right, listen, man. When I go do verses for niggas. Unless I'm like sending it over the email, which I don't, I, I never get rejected. But I always ask the nigga like, "Do you approve of that?" Mm. Because it's like, shit, I might think I'm going hard, but he might not think I'm going hard. So if you don't like it, let me know. I go in there and redo it. But you can imagine how calm this would be if you pay for a future verse. And he sends it back, and it just ain't what you were looking for. You don't think it sounds right on that beat. It's like, it's, it's got to be tough to be like, hey, man, wondering if you could go back in the booth. I ain't going to lie. It's certain niggas you know just you can't do <laughs> yeah, that to. For you real. can't do that to Future. <laughs> he going to look at you crazy. You know? Yeah. Point scene money he gone. Fuck Probably be the, the last time you ever speak to him at that point, yeah. Yeah, because that, 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 that feature going to hit you for a ticket. Yeah. Well, that and that's all a problem. <laughs> you just spent more than you ever spent on anything in your whole no life, bullshit. and you ain't fucking with it. That motherfucker gonna cost you a ticket. So yeah, you yeah. Oh my god, I remember though. Back in the day, I was putting together a, a record uh, for this label, and we we asked a rapper to to rap on it. He agrees on the price and shit, and then he sends it back, and 
This was a rapper where I had never disliked the verse I heard from him, and he sends it to us, and he did some totally different shit and had auto tune all over it, and I was just like, "What the fuck are we gonna?" It didn't happen for various other reasons, mm -hmm. but I was just like, "What the fuck am I gonna do with this? This shit sounds horrible. This is the last thing I wanted to hear from this guy." That's crazy. Yeah, yeah I would have been pissed. Yeah, that happens been sometimes. Pissed. I mean, you know, it's all a, it's all a gamble. Yeah. But when you when you a good artist, man, you you supposed to give the people your one hundred and ten percent anyway. You're very consistent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I appreciate that. I couldn't see you coming with a weird ass auto tune verse. You crazy because I got one. You got a few? Yeah, hey, I got I'm a few. Sure, sure, they're solid. I got a few <laughs> for real. I be fun. It's like I said, bro. It, you know, sometimes it be you feeling. I just be trying shit, bro, because mm -hmm. you never know. Right. This day you never know. And then it's it's never gonna be the sun that you think it's gonna be. Mm. That's what I have noticed. Right. I didn't drop some shit. I thought it was the hardest shit in the world. Put it out and they ain't it ain't do shit. Really. But I didn't put some shit that I was like iffy about out, and that bitch go crazy. So it was like, it ain't up to me to it ain't up to for me to decide. Are you in the studio all the time like that though? What? Like, are you recording constantly? Hell yeah, I always record. Mm. You got to keep music in the whoop whoop. Right. You know what I mean? But some rappers, like, feels like they just kind of do it here and there, and they feel like everything they make is hot. And then some no. rappers are recording 20 songs a week. And no, you just, listen, as long as you get in that bitch, I, I put it like that, you get in that bitch every day and make two songs, man, you good. Really? Two a day? Two a day. Not saying that's what I do, it's more I get, sometimes I get more than two a day. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. We can. I could do an EP in one session. Right. Easy. I believe it. You know what I'm saying? It just certain songs you ain't gonna. Certain songs be for certain shit. Like you can't put a mixtape song on the album. Mm -hmm. You can't put an album song on a mixtape. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to know the. I think that's what I was kind of good at though, cause like senior season was the album. Mm -hmm. But you know, I just put Ghetto Assassin out before that. Right, and I listened to both Ghetto back Assassin, to back, and there's a big more difference. more mixtape yeah. vibe. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But when senior season came, I gave you variety, right. like an album. I mean, the street project is for like your existing hardcore fans, and then the album is like, let's try to make some songs that could go outside of my for existing sure. fan base, right? For sure. Mm. You got to know the difference. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You should do an I'm Back remix. I'm not going to say, I don't know who should be on it. <laughs> but if you put somebody on it, you could potentially, like if you put the right artist on it, I feel like that song could be gigantic. I ain't going to lie. That's in the works? Damn near. Hmm. That's in the works. Interesting. That's in the works. Okay. From from my knowledge, you know. Okay. Empire in there, trying yeah, to make shit me, shake. Me, me and the higher else was talking about it. That and they were saying like, yeah, we we thinking about getting a big artist to hop on a remix. Well, if that happens and it's huge, then we're going to look very, very wise right here. No, for sure. I like it. For sure. RMC Mike. Yes, sir. My man, for the Adam third time. Too. I appreciate you, baby. Appreciate you, dog. Much love. <laughs> RMC Mike, No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, Instagram, etc. Like, comment, and subscribe. Nojumper.com if you want to support. Uh-huh. Free ah. Rio. Free Reese, Free Dog Ghetto, Ghetto Boys, Boys ENT, RMC. Yeah. We doing that.